What's up guys? So I took my MCATs about three months ago and I did pretty well. I got the score I wanted and a lot of my friends have asked me advice on how I studied and prepared for the test. So I thought I'd make a short video describing the techniques I used and the advice that I would like to pass on to others on how to do well on the MCATs. So I'm going to break it down in two main parts. The first is how to learn the material on the exam and the second is practicing for the test and what test day is like. So I spent a total of about eight months studying for the MCATs. The first six months were, you know, relatively light studying, probably let's say like an hour a day, just doing uh, practice tests here and there. And the last two months uh, prior to the exam were just total cramming, uh, about five, four or five hours a day of uh, just doing practice exams, probably a practice exam every uh, two days. So what did I use to study? Uh, first off, classes. Um, definitely take all the classes you need before you take the MCAT. That is biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, and physics. Uh, also, maybe get some kind of English class in there. Uh, something where you're really exposed to critical reading for the verbal reasoning part. Uh, for those who are taking the MCAT in 2015, I would also recommend taking so a sociology class and an introductory uh, psychology class. So before I even go to any like review material, I think it's important that you take the classes because I think that is probably the most effective way to get a complete understanding of the material. Um, I took biology uh, in high school and again freshman year of college. I took chemistry in high school, AP, um, and then I took organic chemistry my freshman year of college. So I definitely reviewed my organic chemistry, my general chemistry before I took the exam. Uh, took Oreo once again, freshman year of college, and then physics, I took uh, AP in high school, and I took a refresher course uh, with a little bit of calculus in um, college. By the way, the physics, all the physics on the MCAT, does not require calculus. However, I would recommend taking a class with calculus because I think it gives you a much better understanding of physics. Also, although it's just general biology that's required and that's all the biology I took before I took my MCATs, I definitely would recommend taking some biochemistry and some anatomy. I took my MCATs following my sophomore year uh, into the, going into the summer before junior year of college. And I just took, well, I'm a junior right now, and I, I'm taking biochemistry and anatomy now. And learning some of the techniques I do, in, especially in biochem, I think would have helped me a lot uh, for biology. So if you're, so I took mine a little bit earlier than most people do, and if you were to take it after junior year, I would definitely, definitely recommend some biochem, some anatomy. Once you take all the classes and you truly understand what's in the classes, before the exam, you don't want to go through years and years of notes. Uh, so what I got is, I got ugh, the whole exam crackers series. Uh, these are not the newest editions, or they weren't the, new edition, the newest editions when I took the test. Uh, however, they were pretty cheap on eBay. And I think I got these for about 20 bucks a pop, or average. Uh, they're all used, by the way. Uh, a little bit of writing inside, but that doesn't really bother me, as long as they didn't write on the... Uh, practice exams so I could take it myself. Anyway, so I got the verbal reasoning one, uh, organic chemistry, chemistry, biology, and uh, physics. Now, um, I know Kaplan and Princeton View both do their books, and I can't say Exam Cracker is better than theirs because I haven't tried theirs. Um, I was recommended by a friend to do Exam Crackers. They worked for me. I've used Princeton and Kaplan in the past for other classes, so I feel like they would just make as good, uh, if not better, books. So whatever brand you use, get them. Um, don't completely rely on them. Once again, make sure you've taken the class in a college setting to learn everything. Uh, but definitely, for the test, take buy the books. My personal recommendation is to get exam crackers, but pretty sure everything else works just as well. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure I knew everything the exam was going to test me on. So I actually went on the AMC website. It's the uh, company that administers the MCAT. And online, I'll put the link down below. 
they have these word docs for all the categories of every single topic that they would test you on. So what I did is I copied all those topics down, put them on a Word document, and as I studied, everything that I knew, I would change from black uh, to blue, or I changed everything in blue, and then what I knew I turned to black. I would write notes down to everything. So I keep looking down list and list every day as I was studying and say, hey, what have I not learned yet? Oh, cell, I don't know that much about the cell. Let me take notes on the cell. I write notes down after my Word document, then I turn it black because, hey, I knew it. And I just keep going until the entire document was black. So that was kind of a checklist for me to know that I have learned everything that the AMC tested on. Um, some of the books do give you a list of all the topics, but those are interpreted from the AAMC. So why not get just the direct text and learn directly from them? Finally, there's a website that I found out about probably in my last two weeks of studying that I wish I'd found out much, much sooner. It's MCAT slash review.org and I'll put the link below again and this was completely free and it was a complete kind of database for all the topics that were tested on the MCATs. Now granted they did not go in nearly nearly as much detail as the exam cracker books or probably the Princeton Review and the Kaplan books but they had all the main highlighted information so it had all the vocabulary words, all the formulas, all the like key specific data that you needed and uh, that's kind of how I worked as I studied. So I would first go into what I learned in class and have just a ton, bookloads and notebooks worth of like material. Then I kind of like filter through that and as I learned something, instead of writing like a whole paragraph about uh, cells, I can just write cells are the basic fundamental blocks of life. Do you know what I mean? I transferred that, that really rich data, information I mean, that I learned into much more condensed notes. That was kind of the level of the Kaplan, so I can just easily go through it. And then once I really was learned that like completely, I would just kind of write notes in the, the MCAT slash review style, where it was just like a bullet point. Cells, build, stuff, life. Do you know what I mean? And I would have a complete uh, notebook of just really, really condensed notes that I looked over prior to the exam. And if I didn't understand something, I go up to say the the review book to this level, and I'd go um, take a look here. Oh, by the way, I didn't actually show you any of these books, so you can probably um, get some of these from your friends. Probably these on eBay, but they're really good books. Um, probably not again as much detail as uh, textbooks, but very colorful, lots of pictures, um, very easy to read. Definitely, there's. And I'll probably, uh, definitely, yeah, definitely check out MCAT slash review.org. I found that incredibly helpful. Probably start with that, then go into your books, textbooks, review books, and then back there. That's kind of the order I would go in. So start big, or start really broad focus, go really deep, and then kind of work your way back out. Another question I've been getting a lot is whether I should uh, attend a class, an MCAT prep class or not. And for me, I think that depends all on you. So personally, I don't like exam prep classes. Um, I took one for my SATs in high school. I found my teacher to be incredibly useless. Um, granted, the books and material were very, very helpful, um, but that was just a mere fraction of the price of the class. So what I did was I bought lots of practice exams, which I'll go over later, and I, of course, I bought the Kaplan books. Now, there are some people who just have no will to study. If I left them alone in a room with a book and a laptop, they'll probably end up in Facebook in five minutes. And, and for those people like that who, who have very low discipline, not saying it's a bad thing, but if that's you, I would recommend a class. A class where it's very structured, you're going into class, sitting down every like three hours, and they force you to learn, right? For me, I'm more of an independent worker. I like working at my own time. Um, I definitely, it definitely took more effort to schedule out time uh, when I could be doing other things uh, to make sure I was studying every single day. So one, is that classroom setting going to benefit you? If so, consider going. Number two, can you really afford it? Uh, many people complain uh, of the incredible price of these classes, and I do agree they're incredibly expensive. I think Kaplan offers one at my college. It's probably like $2,000, $3,000 for like a semester of three times a week. Um, when if I just got 
purely the books and the like CDs and the practice tests would probably be about three hundred dollars or so. Um, if you really need it, go for it. Understand that um, medical school is an incredibly big investment. It's probably around what averages forty, fifty thousand dollars a year for a private medical school. So you're going to be most likely spending a lot of money on your medical education. In that point of view, $2,000 for a class that potentially can get you into medical school is not that expensive. Um, granted, you should be financially aware of what you're spending your money on. So the most important aspect for success on the MCATs is definitely doing lots and lots of practice tests. And if you want to see part two of this video, click right here where I talk about practice tests and the actual test taking day and the events that follow. Alright, thanks.